So the sound quality on the GoPro um, just hasn't turned out to be very good. So I'm going to narrate the next little bit. Thanks, Trish. I'm going to narrate the next, next little bit on the PC. So we're essentially walking up from our house into the village. Um, it's quite a small village. The population at its height was about 650 people. Um, it dropped right down to, I think, 36 or something couple of years ago and it's back up to 51 according to a, the last sort of um, census estimate so I don't know how they do it exactly so I've sped the video up a little bit <coughs> just so that we we're not going at walking pace this is just double timed um, that track goes off to the right goes off around to the other side of the village which is on the other side of the valley um, and this is walking up into the centre part of uh, the village itself. Um, it's quite a pretty little village. Um, there's quite a lot of houses being uh, restored um, and gardens and th things kept nicely. I think after Covid a lot of people have sort of realised that uh, having somewhere to retreat to is a nice thing so a lot of these properties that were sort of semi-derelict are either now being used more at weekends or even being restored um, to live in or certainly to be holiday homes so we're coming up into the square there's a municipal bin uh, we don't have our refuge click collected at the bottom of our garden or drive or whatever so we just have to bring it up and pop it in that dumpy bin. To the left now is the mayor's office and there's a little bus station. So yeah, there's the mayor's office. And the bus station and I think I s I'm not sure if I swing round to, to have a look back down. But we're coming up to a friend of ours, oh I do, yep, I swing around, <laughs> so that I think is the old mayor's office, um, it's empty now, um, still in good order but it's not uh, used, that's looking down back through the valley, and the house up here on the left is a friend of ours. He um, he's one of the few English speakers in the village, and he makes honey, um, and has and has eggs. So we get a little bit of produce off of him. He's doing some repair works on his uh, cellar floor at the moment. Hence the materials outside his house. So at this point, our friend um, actually saw us and came out and just decided uh, he'd join us for the walk. That's his dog. So we go for a walk. Um, he basically took us all around the village, some of the places we hadn't seen before. So we haven't actually walked a huge amount around the village um, because it's a bit hard to know which bits to go where you're not sort of going to disturb people. What are good walks? So he, he decided to come along and show us sort of how to get up into the hills and various other bits. It's a shame that the uh, 
the, the video sound quality was terrible because he was chatting to us, telling us all sorts of things about the village, um, population, uh, the, what, where the old school was, various bits and pieces, and some of the rules relating to where you can go, where you can't go, all this sort of thing. So I'll stop narration now, and you can enjoy a nice Sunday walk around a little Bulgarian village.
and we're back. <laughs> it turned out to be a rather extended walk. Um, we, we met did... our neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you saw in the other bit, we met our neighbour and did a walk around the bottom half of the village. He then offered to take us up to show us where there's some horses um, that trees has been interested in going and finding. Trees are being horsey. Um, and we picked Dexter up to take and him. And we decided to take Dexter with us. Um, he's absolutely worn out. Um, probably turned out to be about a four, four kilometre walk. So we actually spent nearly all, well, all the morning. Three more, three hours we've been out. Yeah, three hours of walking. So uh, I've done my steps. Trees has done her steps. And more. Yeah, I've qualified oh, are you to still be allowed tired? to have a beer. Are you tired? And it's Sunday. So. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, other things this this in the last couple of weeks, we went down to um, what was the name of the village? Orishets uh, near Haskabo on the border with Greece and Turkey. Um, a very border. Yeah, not far from the border at all. Um, actually, the village was no, no, no. The village was Orishets, <coughs> wasn't it? Yeah. Um, near Harmanli, which is near Haskabo. <laughs> in the south of Bulgaria. And that was a long drive. Yeah, it was a good... Uh, seven hours? Yeah, well, it's supposed to be five and a half hours, but um, the, some of the Bulgarian roads we ended up going along, you couldn't drive any speed at all, so it, it ended up being nearly seven hours. That little Mario Kart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to dodge all the... Well, not I wouldn't say potholes, sort of bits where there was no road yeah. onto little bits of track and then back onto a bit of road yeah terrible um i keep saying to people oh, the roads in bulgaria aren't bad at all but i think we've been spoilt up, up in our area of bulgaria and the big motorways that we've been on have all been very good but when you get down south they're terrible <laughs> so we would anyway we would we were down there um trying to put a well, we're going to be putting a Rayburn in for somebody. Um, so the hi, Neil. Yeah, hi, Neil. Um, so the first visit was just putting in a plinth and gathering materials and really sort of sussing out the job. Um, we had hoped to do the whole lot in one go, but it's a bigger job than what we were thinking. So we're going to go back and finish it off. Um, that would be next month. Uh, so here we are. We're down at Orishets. Did you see that? Okay. Shine Back here, just packing up for the winter really, trying to get everything sorted out, garden tidied up, um, I've got to put the doors back on the polytunnel and then I'm, in the next video I'm hoping to show um, putting up a wind turbine combined with a, a spare solar panel and spare battery and making some sort of heating system for the polytunnel, <coughs> uh, not necessarily to heat it, but to, to make it frost free. So sort of just it'll be a, some kind of storage heating system from any power I can get from wind and sun. Um, been looking for it just, just recently, the topics come up on one of the Bulgarian sort of solar forms about sand batteries, which is an idea. Um, or an oil filled or water filled um, sort of heat bank. I don't know yet, but I'm going to work on that one. So that'll be another interesting thing for anybody who likes that sort of uh, 
energy saving ideas. Uh, We've uh, gravelled the drive. Yeah, the drive which we slipped off a couple of years ago, which gets extremely wet and muddy every year. Um, has still got a bit of a hump in the middle that you slide off. Um, so we, the, the mayor very kindly um, has got a truck in the village. He very kindly offered to pick up the stone for us. So we've got a quarry at the bottom of our village where we can get stone, you know, gravel for about uh, 14 lev a ton. <clears throat> so we got about five and a half tons of it in his truck dumped at the top of our drive and then I spent a day with a wheelbarrow, put membrane down with a wheelbarrow just sort of putting all that down. I've got a little tiny bit of video well, This has been that, my job so. today. Um, try and make this track winterproof. Um, I was going to do a sort of time-lapse video showing this little fat old bloke taking gravel up and down the track and raking it out but my the only phone that does time lapse wasn't working, so I haven't. <laughs> but essentially, this is the track going up into our house. Um, we have actually slid off of this before. Um, in the winter, it gets extremely wet and slippery. So we've got a local quarry. Um, our mayor in the village, who's got a lorry, very kindly offered to bring it up for us. So I've got five tonnes of gravel, or chuckle as they call it here, um, dropped it sort of halfway up our drive, as far as he could get his lorry up anyway. Um, but then because of the overhanging walnut tree he couldn't tip it as he went down, so he tipped in a big pile and today I put a membrane down underneath both tracks and I've just been wheelbarrowing it, so my, uh, my back's killing me, my hands are sore. <laughs> But we've hopefully got a winterproof track up as far as here. I've still got to uh, a little bit more to, to finish off. But yeah, one gravel track. No, we've done the lounge. Oh yeah, yeah. We've done, well, it's not just our speeder when she was here, was doing the lounge. We didn't include it in the last video. We hadn't finished it. We hadn't finished it, but it's pretty much finished now. Yeah. Um, a few little tiny bits and pieces. I've still got some skirting board to put on. Um, Dexter's got a new bed. Dexter's maybe? got a new bed, but it needs to be varnished yet. We've just sort of put it in here quickly for now, but that will be sanded down and varnished. Um, more pictures to put up, things like that. So this is our almost completed lounge, front room, whatever you want to call it. Um, Ivan's sister did most of the decorating in here, um, which took a fair bit. It was the beams, really. Um, and now we're just putting the finishing touches to it. Still a couple of skirting boards that, oh yeah, that funny little chap over there doing some editing for the, this uh, vlog. <laughs> uh, Dex is being very lazy, as usual. So yeah, that's Dex's new bed. Just needs to be varnished or stained, whatever we're going to do with it. Uh, and the new flooring that's all down. Uh, last thing really is just finishing, like I say, all the little bits and pieces. Oh, Ivan has put another new light up over there because that end was quite dark. So, yeah, that's all looking good. Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we're knackered. <laughs> totally knackered. Te Dexter is absolutely knackered. Uh, he's never had such a... And he was free reign all the way apart yeah, from the road. He's just running around, so he thought it was wonderful. He thought it was his birthday, I think. So he's been in and out all over the place, but he's... Thoroughly worn out. I've never sleep. seen him come back so <laughs> slow from a walk. <laughs> <laughs> he literally got in here, went straight to his water bowl, had a good old slurp of water, came in and just plop. collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. That's my water bowl. We're plonked. So, mm -hmm. and it's Teresa's favourite day of the week. Roast Sunday. dinner day! <laughs> <laughs> and we've actually found somewhere that at the moment is doing. Pork, hocks, knuckle, knuckle with crackling with skin on it, so we can actually make some crackling. So we can actually have a proper roast dinner. Well, with we always have a proper roast dinner, but one with crackling, which is an absolute treat over here. <laughs> yeah, normally all the pork is skinned. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> well, it's a nice pork, but it's it never has the the sort of layer of fat and the skin. There's just on the no top crackling. To yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it's uh, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> Please like and subscribe and put in the comments anything you want to know or want to see and we'll try our best to do that for you. Um, I think that's about it. Yep. So we'll say ciao. Bye till next time. Bye.